This is a basic concept that's not introduced until chapter 26, I think it is in your book. Um, so we're gonna actually come back to it, but it's such a basic component. I feel like it should be more in the introduction to anatomy and physiology. Um, it's what are the different compartments that contain fluid in your body? And you probably know them already, right? But let's I'll be explicit about them. There are three main sources of fluids, um, places where fluids are kept. Those are the plasma, so that's in the blood, inside the cell, right? So you know the term ICF, ICF, and then outside of the cells. So that's called IF, it's also called, so inside the cell is ICF, outside the cell is what? ECF. So these two together equal the ECF. Before this, we've pretty much just talked about ICF, ECF being two different things, um, and they are. So inside the cell, the concentration of various ions is different than it is outside of the cell. Now we're going to break it down also, separating the plasma out from the interstitial fluid. Interstitial means around the tissues, so it's going to be around the cells. And that fluid is a little bit different than what's in the plasma. The plasma itself is separated from the interstitial fluid by this layer of cells right here. Actually, right, this is made up of cells. So, um, and I want to break down what components each of these makes up in terms of the total body water. Um, so the total body water is actually this whole thing is 60% of your weight. And then that's broken down by plasma, interstitial fluid, and intracellular fluid. Remember these two things together, these are our ECF. So these ECF together is about 20% of total body weight. This is of weight, total body weight. And then intracellular fluid, this one, only one type of it, um, although it does vary slightly in different cells, is about 40% right, which you could have done that math. I could have asked you to do that. 60% minus 20% is 40%. So there's a lot of water inside your cells. So this is kind of just, I want you to start thinking about this now that we're looking at plasma and blood. And we're gonna come back to this idea of fluid compartments and the importance of maintaining them and maintaining how things move in between them when we get to fluid homeostasis. So that's with the urinary system. Um, but so you can imagine that changing the fluid volume or concentration here would affect the other compartments, right? Because of diffusion and osmosis. So it's gonna become important for maintaining homeostasis. Okay, so what we've done so far here is introduce, um, describe the fluid compartments of the body. These are the three compartments.